Imagine two similar women who each have unwanted pregnancies. They both go to abortion clinics. One has a pregnancy that's just days before the clinic's gestational limit, and the other is just days past the limit. So one of them receives an abortion, and the other is turned away. Their different life trajectories after that might not tell you a lot on their own. But if you were to track this scenario for hundreds of women, you could gather a lot of data on what life looks like after women are denied an abortion. This was the concept for a huge naturalized experiment in the U.S. that tracked this for the first time. For five years, every six months, researchers called the women to see how their lives had progressed. And one of the things their research uncovered was the financial impact of forced parenthood. What they heard from these calls reveals the high economic cost of an abortion ban and exactly who is made to bear that cost. Hello? There's no way that you don't have a child and love and want that child. And I very much feel that way about my son. But that isn't the, that isn't how we began. I felt like I was drowning and had zero control over my life. And having an abortion felt like reaching out for air. The voices you hear in this video weren't part of the study, but their stories overlap with some of its findings. I was six months along. And so I, like at that point, I had to carry to term. There wasn't a choice of, am I going to give birth or not? I'd actually made that decision twice in life. For me, they both felt pretty easy right away. Roughly 60% of women in the study and abortion seekers in the U.S. are already parents. Abortion seekers in the study, and more broadly, are much more likely to be a person of color when compared to the general population, and are almost four times as likely to live in poverty. And that can be about who has access to contraception, who has had great sex ed classes, who can negotiate contraceptive use with a partner. And it's also about who can accommodate a surprise pregnancy. Diana Green Foster is a demographer who led the study, which she calls the Turnaway Study. Among all women in the study, there are three groups we'll focus on. One group was women who got an abortion in the first 13 weeks of pregnancy, the first trimester. This stage of pregnancy is when about 90% of abortions in the U.S. happen in the general population. But for the study, it was underrepresented and used as a control group for this group, women who got abortions within two weeks of an abortion clinic's gestational limit, which averaged at the 20-week mark. This later abortion group is a less common abortion experience in the U.S. But for the purposes of the study, it was overrepresented in order to compare to this third group, women who just barely missed the gestational limit and were denied an abortion. This last group is called the turnaway group. The turnaway study hinges on comparing the outcomes of these two groups. But comparing the two groups of women who sought later term abortions to the first trimester group can tell us something too. 40% of the first trimester group were living under the poverty line, but 57% of the later term abortion group were. Lack of money slows people down and prevents them from moving as quickly to getting an abortion. Wealthy women have unwanted pregnancies. They are more likely to get their abortion, and that's because they can afford to do it. They can travel, they can pay for the procedure, they can get time off work. In fact, when women in the study were surveyed about their motivations for wanting an abortion, not financially prepared was the most common response. What was going on in your life when you had an unplanned pregnancy? We were barely able to scrape by at that point, and there was just not enough money. The financial situation was like a really big deciding factor for me. I just graduated from undergrad. I was doing an unpaid fellowship. We live in the Bay Area. You definitely need a dual income household to be able to live well, so we were not okay financially. Because of my uh, do documentation process, I couldn't legally work. I was just starting my professional career when I found out I was pregnant. I was three months into my first real job out of college. One thing researchers asked the study participants over the years was whether the relationship that led to the pregnancy lasted. This was to try to get an idea of whether these women had support. At the time of the abortion clinic visit, 
80% of the study participants said they were still in this relationship. By the second year, that number fell to 60%. And by the fifth year, only about 27% of them were. Regardless of whether women in the study received or were denied an abortion, the likelihood of the relationship working out was low. He gets to go off and live his life and forget that he's a father while my entire life is about being a mother and caretaking for this person. It is already like a lot to go through unexpectedly and it's a lot to do it on my own. The high likelihood of that relationship ending makes sense, given that another common reason for wanting an abortion was for partner-related reasons. I don't know that it would have been a, a healthy thing for ourselves or a child to have to endure those types of disagreements, that type of conflict, that type of disconnect. Trying to measure other types of support, researchers found that five years on, women denied abortions were more likely to be living alone with their children than women who received abortions and had other children. It didn't look like they were getting a lot of support from their partners or their immediate family. We looked at child support payments. On average, it was only about $20 a month. $20 in child support, that's extremely low. Yeah, and this is including a lot of people reporting getting $0 of child support and then a few people reporting getting sort of normal amounts of child support. And finally, the researchers gathered financial data for these two groups to figure out what becoming a parent without much support looks like. We linked the participants in the Turnaway study to 10 years of credit reporting agency data, and this went back before their pregnancies. Researchers looked at financial distress indicators, like debt or evictions, in the two groups. And before the Turnaway group gave birth, the two groups were on similar economic trajectories. But after the Turnaway group gave birth, the two groups diverged, and the level of financial distress for the women denied an abortion spiked. We saw this big spike in financial problems among the turnaway group. Nearly 80% higher amounts of uh, debt that was 30 days or more past due. 78% increase in things like bankruptcies or, or liens or evictions where you're ordered to pay the landlord some amount of money. And we saw a big spike in those. So some people might look at this research and say, you're going to be more financially strained if you have a child because your life is just going to be more expensive. So why is it important to look at this in relation to an abortion denial? One thing we did to investigate this question was we looked in the near limit group. So some of the women who initially obtained an abortion later went on and, and had a pregnancy that resulted in a child and, and they gave birth. After the births of their children, the financial distress indicators for these two groups looks like this, which shows the more severe financial penalties for women having children when parenting is wanted versus after an abortion denial. The women in this study were seeking abortions because they, they knew that this was a bad time for them. They knew this was a time where it would be potentially really, really costly and really damaging to them and their economic circumstances. And not just their own. 55% of the children of the women who were able to get an abortion were living in poverty. But that number rose to 72% for the children of the women who were denied. Which is relevant to another common reason study participants gave for wanting an abortion. The need to focus on other children. One of your fears when you were deciding whether or not to have an abortion was that you wouldn't be able to afford the childcare. And I'm wondering how much of those fears were realized for you. Oh, 100% of those fears were realized for me. I don't have childcare now. There's still no way to afford childcare on my salary. Something the Turnaway study shows is that these reasons turned into accurate predictions of what the women would struggle with after an abortion denial. Women understand the consequences of unwanted pregnancy, and when they're trying to decide whether to have an abortion or have a baby, they understand completely what the outcomes will be. I was able to go to law school and complete the degree that I've been saying I wanted to do since I was eight years old. My life outside of being a mother has just been 
exponentially harder and almost impossible. And there was mourning for the life that I imagined. There was just no way I would have the time or the money um, to do those things, like going to grad school or moving away from family. I was able to fight the deportation case and I, I have a career. I was able to get out of a marriage that just wasn't working because I didn't have to think about how it impacted somebody else. I get to define my life the way that I want to without having to factor in a family. If somebody tells you they're not ready to carry a pregnancy to term, they're not. Believe them.